hey guys, Image Line has released FL Studio 12, but instead of looking at the new features that they've been featuring, we're gonna reflect back on a blog that I did in November of 2014, where I talked about some improvements that I feel they should have made, and we're gonna see which ones that they did do and the ones that they didn't do. They gave us the ability to gang select files from a folder, audio files, and drag them to the playlist. So that was one of the improvements that I had mentioned in my older blog, and they did it, which was great. But the audio files on the playlist still don't really correspond with the mixer, so you still have to go to what is now the channel rack, highlight all of these, which are samplers corresponding with these audio files, and then go to, let's say, mixer channel one, right click, and say route selected channel starting from this track and it'll now send all of these to the channels in the mixer so they did half of what i talked about they didn't do the other half another thing they did was they improved how you install new plugins usually you have to install plugins and if you had a plugin pack that was like let's say 32 plugins in the bundle you'd have to bring up this long list which they eliminated and you'd have to check off all 32 of the plugins after you scanned and then it showed you had 32 new plugins they'd be highlighted in red so that kind of helped but you had to go and check each one individually there was no way to highlight all 32 and then just check them all in one shot you had to check each one at a time so now the plugins are they show up right here you just go to plugin database go to installed and if you're looking for effects you go to effects go to new and all your new plugins are right here and then you can drag them in and start building your database and organizing it the way you want to I'll do a video later on on how you do that. So those are the only two improvements that I mentioned that they actually did do. So here are the features that I discussed that they did not do. So recording is a little bit confusing in FL because they have a lot of different ways. You can record to the playlist. You can also record to Edison, which is their audio editor. But it, it just gets very weird and confusing and it's just too many options. It needs to be a little bit more streamlined where you just record to the playlist and it automatically, you know, links to a channel in the mixer. Because you set up the routing through the mixer to do the recording, but yet when you're done recording, you have this audio file that's in a sampler, but then it's not linked to any mixer channels. So then you have to route it to a mixer channel. It gets very confusing. But they didn't address it, they kept it as is. The next improvement that I discussed that they did not address is the arbitrary numbers when you're dealing with settings. When you right click on a fader or a knob to enter in your own values, it always comes up with some arbitrary number, like a weird number with decimal points and it's really long and it doesn't really make any logical sense. I would rather see something like a 0 to 100 or a 0 to 50 or even a 0 to 10 range where I can enter in a value for let's say a mixer fader or something or some kind of a percentage but they just have these random arbitrary numbers and it's still the same. Another feature that they did not address was the mod wheel. Whenever I start FL the mod wheel is not connected to anything and I have to link it manually. I mean, there's a workaround for that. You can um, create a template with it already linked. And once you launch that template, then it'll be set up. But, you know, I just felt like most DAWs, it's already linked when you start by default. But they didn't address it. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. The last feature that I did discuss in the blog that they did not take care of was the EQ. The default EQ on the mixer, it's very helpful to have it there but there's no way to bypass it. So if you dial in some values, sometimes you want to A, B what you did, and there's no way to do that. So that's it for this video, guys. We're going to bring it to a close. And as usual, you will see me 
in the next video. So that's just a quick concept on how to think about going about starting a beat. Think weakness first. Concentrate on getting that. So that's just a quick tip on how I go about getting some peace of mind with my data so that I'm not worried that one day my drive is gonna crap out and I won't have. Before you jump to upgrade, take a step back and look at the software that you have right now. Do you know everything about it? Most times we only use about 10% of the software.